everyone. My name is Julian Holland. I'm from the University of Southampton, and my talk is going to be on building more realistic models of battery materials. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to be looking at the quantum mechanical simulations of entire graphite nanoparticles and looking at ways that we can intercalate them. So first of all, a little bit of background. As I'm sure we all know, the graphite anode is uh, ubiquitous in most lithium-ion batteries. This is because it's cheap. I've got a high lithium storage capacity and is stable against electrolytes and lithium itself. Now, the process in which lithium is stored through is not as well understood as we would like. We're going to be looking at two specific types of phenomena, uh, the AV to AA stacking, whereby the uh, graphite in its ground state is in this staggered AB state. And as, it inter as more and more lithium is intercalated into it, it shifts to this AA state. Another phenomenon is the staging, whereby when lithium intercalates into a system, it leaves gaps in between uh, different li lithium layers. Uh, if there are four graphite layers between, e between each lithium layer, then it's considered a stage four structure. And if there's one, it's called a stage one structure. Understanding these processes could really help with uh, uh, anode development. In order to simulate an entire graphite nanoparticle, we use linear scaling DFT program OneTep. Typical DFT programs are hard caps and the number of atoms that they uh, can simulate, so normally to around a couple of hundred or so. This is because they have order n to the three scaling processes. By localizing the wave function around atomic centers and then truncating, uh, one tip manages to achieve order to the n scaling or linear scale. Uh, for further details about one tip itself, I highly recommend you go check out Chris's talk, which should be in, in around the same section of my talk, so please do that. So uh, in terms of what we're looking for in this research, we want to be able to run quantum mechanical calculations on an entire graphite nanoparticle and its lithiated structures. Uh, we want to be able to reproduce some of the experimental observations that I, talk about, uh, I talked about previously in an unbiased manner. We, we also want to validate a new electrostatic potential method whereby we place lithiums in it, uh, into the graphite nanoparticle. Uh, we'll talk about this a bit later on. And then finally, we want to analyze the structures that we produce and find insights that may be relevant to anode development. Firstly, I want to talk about the graphite nanoparticle itself. Most prior quantum mechanical calculations are focused on the bulk because it's much cheaper to do that. However, we posit there may be some vital physics that has been missed. Uh, so in order to uh, check this out, we utilize OneTep uh, to model an entire nanoparticle. Uh, we believe we're the first to run uh, quantum mechanical simulations on an entire graphite nanoparticle, uh, let alone intercalate it. So, the nanoparticle that we chose is a four layer nanoparticle of around 592 atoms. This is a lot smaller than nanoparticles would be in real life. Uh, however, it should allow us to validate and refine quickly while still producing some of the phenomena that we, would, we spoke about at the beginning, such as staging. Here I'm going to talk about the electrostatic potential uh, method where we used to, which we used to place lithium into the graphite nanoparticle itself. I mentioned this a little earlier. So, um, it, it works under the basic principle whereby we start with our structure. So let's look at the top right here in this in this graphic and we perform a one tip calculation on it. So at the beginning here, we've got just a normal graphite nanoparticle. We perform a one tip calculation on this. This outputs the electrostatic potential. And then we look for the global minimum of this electrostatic potential that we performed on this nanoparticle and then place a lithium there. This generates a new structure, obviously, and then we perform this process again. And we repeat the cycle endlessly until we get a fully lithiated structure. We were able to validate this method on, a, on, on bulk systems, and it was able to reproduce in an unbiased manner. That means we're not telling the lithiums where to go. We're not telling what, how the carbon to move at all. We were able to reproduce in an unbiased manner, A, B to A, A re reproduction and um, lithium staging. Let's look at some of the structures that we produce by applying this method. With initial intercalations, we ended up getting a stage two structure with our nanoparticle. This is again, unbiased as, as we showed with the bulk, um, but there were some drawbacks. Specifically, we noticed that, in, as you can sort of see in the top uh, left of our uh, image here, uh, we saw a dramatic preference for edge sites, i.e. there's no lithium filling in the center of the nanoparticle. This uh, process was almost exacerbated as, as we intercalated further. And actually the edge site preference was so dramatic that we ended up getting an early breakdown of stage two structure into a stage one. Normally we would expect the breakdown to occur around two thirds lithium capacity and we noticed it occurring at around half lithium capacity. We also noticed that this edge site preference caused closer, closer than expected li uh, lithiation. That means that the lithiums were being closer together than we would expect to see in the bulk graphite, in, in bulk graphite. 
Our final structure also had an uneven number of lithium atoms in each layer, indicating that it wasn't fully saturated, despite the fact that it reached the lithium theoretical limit of LiC6. We also saw that uh, central sites were only partially filled, and uh, there was no evidence of an AD to AA shift. In order to probe why this was occurring, uh, one of the methods that we did to analyze our structure was use uh, uh, analyze the local charges. So we use something called Mulliken population analysis, which shows how the charges change as the nanoparticle is lithiated on individual atomic sites. Here we show just the carbons, I'll just display it on the, on the right here, and uh, we can see that the edge carbons have a slightly electronegative, uh, uh, have a slightly negative charge. This is because they are next to their slightly more electropositive counterparts of, of hydrogens. Um, and this isn't necessarily what occurs in real life, it was just a convenient termination for us to use. As lithium intercalation occurs, the edge sites become more and more negative. So at the top here, we have zero uh, lithium. So this is just the plain graphite nanoparticle. At the bottom, we have a completely fully saturated uh, nanoparticle. And we can see that they've got darker and darker with time, indicating that as the lithium intercalates, this, uh, they give up their electron into the specific uh, carbons or locally at, at those carbons. And this, this makes them more and more electronegative, which attracts more lithiums. And it's, it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy maybe on this point method we can use to observe this charge transfer occurring between the lithium and the carbon nanoparticle itself is the electronic density of states. What the electronic density of states show is the number of energy states occupied by the system below the Fermi level, or in this case in our system here, in the picture here, we've got uh, it at set to zero. Um, now if it is the case that the lithium gives up electrons into the nanoparticle itself, then we would expect those electrons to go into the conduction band of the nanoparticle and cause a shift left in the density of states. Now, if we look at our density of states plot here, the uh, line in blue represents zero lithium, so there's just a completely normal uh, graphite nanoparticle. And then as we intercalate and go up to, let's say, the fully saturated limit, uh, we, we note that the entire density of states has shifted left, indicating to us that the electrons have indeed gone from the lithium into the graphite nanoparticle. One final particularly useful bit of analysis we can perform on our structures is the open circuit, is finding the open circuit voltages. Now, this is particularly useful because we can directly compare our results to that of experiment. In order to find an open circuit voltage using computational results, we need to look at the convex hull to find the important structures. This is uh, displayed at the top here, where the orange circles represent the structures that lie directly upon the uh, convex hull itself. And these are the structures we're going to use to, uh, to draw a voltage step profile, which can be directly compared to the open circuit voltages of experiment. Um, our voltage step profile is displayed in orange here and uh, on the left, and is directly compared to experimental values. Uh, but these experiment, sorry, uh, directly compared to computational values, um, and these computational values were all performed on bulk, on the bulk itself. Um, and on the right here, you can sort of see experimental values. Um, Comparing to experiment, we find our materials to be roughly four times larger. This could be due to the uh, perfect nature of our nanoparticle, it being unrealistically small, um, and or using uh, the decision to use hydrogen termination, or some sort of combination of all of the above. So to conclude, our electrostatic potential guided filling of a graphite nanoparticle was able to reproduce without any uh, sort of parameterization or, or guidance from us, uh, stage two stacking, a reasonable looking convex hull, which is very important, and uh, a lithium to nanoparticle uh, charge transfer, which is all things that we would expect to see on a bulk structure or like you expect to see experimentally. However, there is a lot of room for uh, improvement. Uh, we did not observe an AB to AA shift. We saw a large amount of edge accumulation on lithium and a much higher than experimental uh, voltage step profile. Moving forward, we want to look at different ways to improve our model. Uh, we want to look at different terminations um, instead of hydrogen. We also want to maybe look at the use of an implicit salt model. This will help us more accurately represent the solid electrolyte interface that occurs in batteries. Uh, we also want to move to larger systems. Uh, nanoparticles are bigger than 600 atoms. Uh, this hopefully may help capture some of the physics we're maybe lacking in our smaller one. And it shouldn't be too costly due to the linear scaling nature of one tap. We just want to look at refinements to the theory using different correlation, exchange correlation functionals and improving the lithium placement, uh, including effects such as temperature, as you tend not to intercalate batteries at zero degrees Kelvin. Finally, I'd like to thank the Skylaris Group for their help and advice, Biovia for funding this PhD, the Faraday Institution for giving me opportunities like this, uh, University of Southampton, and again, the Faraday Institution.
institution for access to various supercomputers that were vital to this project. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, here is my Twitter handle and here's my email. And if you have any questions, please submit them for, for the panel through one of the following means. Thank you.